Well, it's August 2024, and that means that football season is well underway as far as practices go, and soon we'll be on display for the fans of Kettering to see this initial matchup between you folks and Alter. Right. And I am with Dave Miller, who is the head coach of the Fairmont Firebirds. So uh, this interview is uh, basically going to be a season review. So let's uh, start with the quarterback, Brock Baker. He's back. Yep. Okay. Uh, what changes will occur this year utilizing him in terms of first pass uh, second? Uh, let's turn it again. Uh, utilizing him in terms of run first pass second. Well, uh, it, it's philosophical again. You know, we have a philosophy here, and it's it's been s somewhat successful. So we lean on that heavily. Brock is very talented. Um, obviously, he'll be a three-year starter. Uh, started midway through his sophomore season against Springfield. Um, you know, so he's continued to get better uh, at at a lot of things. Um, He's a dual threat guy, um, you know, a, a locker room guy. I mean, I can't say enough about him. I, I don't understand how people are missing, you know, arguably one of the best quarterbacks around I, to me. It, and they don't see the intangible things that he does, um, you know, just the way he leads our team um, by example. Uh, you know, he's also vocal when he needs to be. Um, but the things he does for us on offense are phenomenal, you know, so we have – you know the ability to do a lot of things with him, um, but again, it it has to fit our philosophy, and, and uh, he understands that. That's another great thing about him. He's he's a selfless young man, and you know I, I think I tell people, I know college coaches all the time, you know he plays in our our offense, which doesn't highlight you know maybe some of the things that he does really really well, but at the same time, he's playing in our offense, which says a lot about him uh, as far as his his adaptability. Um, you know, willing to do whatever it takes to help the team. Um, but obviously we know there, there's things he can do real well, and, and uh, there, there are a lot of them. So, you know, it, it's there, and uh, we'll take advantage of it when it, they give it to us. And, you know, he's there to, to answer the call when that happens. So, As for the rest of the running backs, who will be carrying the ball? Or do you know at this point? Well, it, it's become more clear. I think last year we talked about more by committee. Uh, we weren't really sure who was going to Baker, who was a – Obviously, a school record holder still, uh, season you know single season record holder and uh, career as well yardage wise. But so we weren't real sure, and uh, we had a good group last year. You know, uh, probably you know three or four different guys that, that filled in there. Um, you know, we graduated Asa Asa Dunleavy, who was was a huge factor for us the last two years. Um, but we have some good young guys, and they're all none of them are seniors. You know, so that's a good good problem to have. Um, but they're very talented. I, you know, I'd start with Logan Doty. He's, he's been working fullback, uh, working tailback as well for us. Uh, Damian Patton played fullback last year, so we've worked him more tailback this year. But those guys can do both. Um, Nolan Stringer has, has filled in for Asa so far. Um, you know, A.J. Colbertson is, is kind of in the mix with him. Um, but Nolan's had a couple, you know, really a good, good scrimmage uh, the other day and uh, has done some really impressive things for us on the practice field, too, that we've seen. Um, and then we have, uh, you know, uh, some other guys, too, some, uh, a couple sophomores and a junior, Cameron Thornton, uh, who came back out this year and, and has a lot of talent. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's there. Uh, we have some runners uh, for sure. So might be our most talented backfield, you know, since I've been here. Um, so we'll see. We might be covering some common ground here, but at the wideout position, who are the names to look for? Well, you know, it starts with Tony Bruno. Um, you know, we graduated uh, Carson Copley last year, you know, as a starter, and Tony got significant time. Um, Egan Kyber has uh, really stepped up, uh, just a, a great leader for our team uh, as a junior. Um, hasn't played a lot of football, so he's, he's still kind of learning. Last year was his first year, but, um, you know, so I'd start with those two. Uh, we've got, you know, J.J. Hill. Uh, our, our backup quarterback right now to Brock uh, is going to see some time at wide out, um, uh, you know, so uh, and, and possibly some defensive back. So, you know, he's going to be in the mix there, too. Uh, Zach Maley, who will be a senior, uh, has been working in there as well. Uh, and then we have brought, uh, you know, Connor Robinson over from the defense uh, as a sophomore. Uh, so all those guys are competing you know, for the spot there. Uh, who will be manning the offensive line? Well, that's that's again. We have we actually have some depth this year. I didn't I didn't feel as good about us last year. Um, you know, we obviously had Colton Green and and uh, um, Noah Tolick, who were you know previous starters from the year before. 
Uh, Taven Gifford and Brett Fuller are returning senior starters on the line. Uh, and then there's a lot of new faces. You know, really, we have uh, Luke, Luke Cheekwood at, at tight end. So it's kind of when I talk about Luke and offensive line, he's also a tight end. We will throw to him. Uh, he is a talented kid. Um, so those are our three starters, you know, Brett, Taven, and, and Luke. Uh, and then we have a lot of juniors and, and really one sophomore that's that's uh, in the mix there. Jonathan Gwizdak uh, for our juniors, uh, Luke Young. Um, uh, center, Braden Feltner, we brought him over from the defense side of the ball. Um, Griffin Cromick, uh, who had a really outstanding offseason and has really built himself into a, a good lineman for us. And then you know, our, our sophomore that's mixing in there is uh, Ben McElvain. Uh, so we have quite a few, really, you know, uh, that, I, that we believe provides us with some depth uh, this year that we didn't necessarily have last year. Okay, on the... Oh, and I missed one too. Okay. I, I always miss kids. I hate doing doing this because I'm always afraid I'm going to do that. But um, uh, Jacob Lightcap, you know, the, as our other tight end, uh, as a junior, again, he and he and Griffin had just a phenomenal off, off season. So you know, it was really he, he gained I think 50 pounds or something of muscle, which is you know just crazy. But uh, so he's mixing in there at, at tight end too. Okay, and then let's uh, move on uh, to the defense. Who are the key names on the line that will be impactful? And I think you've already mentioned one or two. Well, we have, you know, um, Logan Logan Wilkins, you know, as, as our, our anchor position, kind of a glorified defensive end. He can also drop back and play some linebacker for us, too. Uh, you know, he's a two-time um, state qualifier in the in the hurdle so having a guy like that up front is <laughs> you know you have some speed there obviously it's some ability um, you know on the other end we have uh, Connor Haston uh, who's a, a returning starter uh, has and will be able to play interior some too and, and he has improved his speed uh, tremendously too so both those guys could be a problem I think for you know uh, coming off the edge or wherever we put you know Connor um, that could be a real problem. Right now, it's kind of a question mark with the rest of the D-line. Yeah, I know Coach Ron Colley and uh, newcomer Coach Bear to our staff. You know, he played at the Air Force Academy, uh, Troy High School. Uh, really great, great situation there getting him. But he's helping Coach Ron Colley, trying to figure it out, um, you know, along with Quentin Emerson, who played for us, you know, who's going to be the uh, of the 12 that we're rotating in there. Tabe and Gifford might go over and play some, you know, both ways a little bit. Um, but there's a whole bunch of names. And, no, you know, Cooper Harbarger, I think, from, from last year as a returning starter, maybe has the edge just because of that. But, um, you know, there's a lot of guys battling there. So kind of kind of by committee right now. So It's a pass-happy G-Walk. Uh, uh, when the time comes, what does the secondary look like? Uh, we got a work cut out for us there, you know, and we graduated two good ones with Stevie and you know, Stevie Doty and, and Cameron Payne, um, both multiple year starters and, and uh, you know, that's kind of left the void in a way. But, you know, again, we have some good, good guys back there. Um, you know, Caleb Moore has had a, a really impressive offseason, good summer. Um, he's competing as a junior. And then we have two seniors with Garrett Worrell and uh, uh, Dominic Jett. Uh, both are, are track guys and can run, you know, but they're still trying to figure out, you know, how to utilize that speed against the speed. We saw, you know, in our scrimmage against Mount Healthy and Middletown, we got to see some speed down there. So, um, you know, they, they got exposed a little bit, but I think they'll, they'll learn from that. And, and you know, they, they've had leadership wise, they've done a great job for us. It's really been a great summer. Toby Deglo as the returning starter at free safety. Uh, and then we have Chase Ford back there at Strong. Um, you know, and, and some other guys that, that they're in the mix. I already mentioned JJ, you know, Hill may go over there and play some corner too. Um, and some sophomores, some really impressive sophomores there. Um, Adam Grant, Connor Robinson, um, if we can keep them healthy. Um, Davion Rand is another guy that could really, you know, get in the mix there too. And then I, I, we didn't really talk about our linebackers. They get kind of lost in the shelf a little bit, but, but we have a really good linebacking core this year. Gavin Prophet is a three-year starter. Um, you know, one of our, our major team leaders, I think he and Brock, you know, kind of, they, they are essentially our captains, you know, when we look at that. Uh, we don't necessarily name them, but the guys look up to them. We, we did a, fo a foxhole activity, and I think like 49, 50 guys had those guys in their foxholes, you know, so it says a lot about them. Uh, Skyler Slifer, junior, uh, started last year as a sophomore. Uh, and then, you know, our, our, our Will linebacker this year right now, uh, the edge goes to Jack Probasco. Uh, but we've got some other guys. Colby Wallace as a sophomore. Scott Conley as a junior. 
Um, and I'm probably missing some. Again, I hate this because I, <laughs> I need a cheat sheet. But uh, really deep there, you know, for the most part, it's, it, there's a lot of guys to work with, including a lot of talented sophomores, you know, that uh, could find their way into the lineup. So it's a good situation. Okay. Well, you stole my one question, so All I'm right. not going to talk about the linebackers okay. anymore. Okay. All right. But, sorry. <laughs> uh, no problem. Um, finally, uh, briefly on Alter, what are your thoughts on going up against an experienced offense led by quarterback Gavin Connor and running back Noah Jones? Yeah, you know, they're experienced, period. Uh, they, they have eight or nine guys back on defense. Uh, so I'd start with that. You know, I, I watched them in the scrimmage, and you know, Beaver Creek, uh, Trey Smitherman, who coached here with us for a year, is a good friend of mine. You know, they're running the triple again, so we'll get to see that, you know, on film, which is good. But um, from what I heard, it, it was, you know, their, their defense – flies around and you know um coach dom sites you know just runs a great program over there um and and you know it, it's uh <laughs> it's going to be a formidable task um you know they get that defense humming um you know tom alig does a phenomenal job with them and their coaches you know they coach them up really well uh, but then you know you go over the offensive side and they've got their entire backfield back including a, a four-year starter at quarterback uh, who kind of shredded us a little bit last year at times and is a good runner. He's a dual threat guy too. Uh, but that backfield is as good as we're going to see. And, and they honestly, when we look at our schedule, they have the most experience of anybody on our schedule. That includes, you know, anybody in the G-Walk. So um, that's, it's, it's a formidable schedule and I wouldn't want it any other way, but um, it, it's going to be a war. I, I think that that's going to be a good one. That's going to be one of those classic battles between us and them and, and, uh, could come down to the last possession or something like that. So should be fun. All right. Of course, we're recording this out a week or so in advance of everything. So I want to wish you good luck on Thursday night, right. the 22nd, uh, against Alder. Right. Thank you. Okay. I'm with Coach Ed Domsice, who is the head coach of the Alder Knights for how many years? Uh, this is probably around year 32. All right. A lot of experience. Mm -hmm. um, reflecting on last year, quite a run. Five postseason wins to get uh, to the state title game. What were the keys to gelling at the end of the season? Well, I think uh, offensive line came together. Uh, really, uh, we, we saw improvement week to week. You, you can't often say that about your team, but we did see that with last year's group. A lot of the credit goes to the position coaches and to our senior leaders last year because uh, they, uh, they they went out every every week, uh, every day, really, and uh, tried to improve, tried to get better. Like I say, we always talk about that, but it seldom occurs. I think the other thing was we were able to do some things defensively a little bit different in the last seven or eight weeks. It proved to be much more of a much more conducive or I would say conducive to our personnel. Uh, looking to this year, let's start with the offense with quarterback Connor and running back Jones, uh, both who uh, came off of a strong year. Uh, what more do you want to see from them? Well, I think uh, just just continued improvement. They are, you, you never, uh, I don't think you ever get to the point where you've reached the, uh, the mountaintop. I mean, your name's not Mahomes, it's not Brady, so uh, there's probably plenty of room for improvement. I think that uh, with uh, with, with those two fellas, we've got Mikey Rose back at fullback. We've got Rod Owens at the other running back. So, uh, you know, we've got a pretty stable backfield there, we hope. Uh, I'll tell you the uh, what we expect to improve with our offensive backs. We expect that we, we're going to block a little bit better. And uh, that's, uh, you know, that's not just an expectation. If we don't block better out of the backfield, uh, that certainly is going to limit what we're able to do, even if the line gels. Um. So who does Connor uh, look to be throwing to? Well, I think that uh, Jimmy Nagel was the number one re receiver coming back, but he's got uh, senior Channing Hawes. He's got Blake Gertis. He's got Joe Dorley. These are all seniors. Uh, they're uh, they're they're all capable, and uh, you know so uh, you know we'll uh, we'll see. Uh, I think uh, in most cases with our routes, we don't go in necessarily with a preconceived notion of which man he's going to hit. It's a little bit like the option. Uh, what you're doing is you're reading, reading some things the defense does, where their alignment and, and their coverage. Uh, it's a little bit different when we throw out of the wishbone. Who's going to be protecting Connor? Well, uh, give you some of the uh, some of the, the the kids who are coming back. Probably the uh, the one with the most experience is Noah uh, 
Marquez, Noah Marquez is, uh, and he's actually uh, had some D1 offers from some of the MAC schools. The academies have been have shown interest, and uh, so he's uh, he's a big plus for us on that line. Uh, Gabe Labrandi has come around, and uh, he uh, he got some playing time last year, and uh, with this year he's going to be a starter. Uh, he just uh, he's uh, he's strong, uh, he's smart kid. Uh, he'll get after it. I think those are uh, th those are probably two who jump out at us. Uh, Liam Brady's working awful hard, another senior. So, um, I, you know, I mention names. You always end up forgetting one or two or, or, or not uh, not mentioning a couple you should. I'm trying to get as many of the seniors mentioned as possible. Uh, let's go to the defense then. Access to linebackers, especially having to do without the conference top tackler last year, Henry uh, Reifschneider. Henry Reifschneider, yes. Henry's up at Bowling Green now. Mm -hmm. So how they... Uh, you think they'll be able to pull it together without him? Well, I think, him? I think Connor Watkins is back, and Connor had uh, a great deal of experience. Connor's like a, uh, a, a quarterback of the defense. He studies the, uh, the films. Uh, he, uh, he looks at the formations, understands what's likely to be run by the opponent, and really takes charge out there for us. Uh, Henry's brother, Wyatt, is going to be the other inside linebacker in all probability. Uh, other kids out there on that defense, Simon Deddens at the, at the interior position. Defensive line, uh, defensive end. Uh, we've got Nolan Ogburn, a junior, We've got a great deal of experience, as well as uh, uh, I want to call him Monty, but it's Morgan Montgomery, and Morgan's the other defensive end. He has a good bit of experience. So, uh, you know, those are those are the front line people. Okim Dieze will be. Uh, he, he could play a number of spots. He could be a defensive end. He could be a linebacker. Uh, he could be a safety. In the secondary, we've got uh, John Keithley. He's a senior. We've got Noah Lawson. Uh, again, looking primarily at the seniors. Um, one of our sophomores, Drew Cripps, has um, a lot of experience as a freshman. And uh, so we are with uh, with those kids back there. Uh, you know, they, we, we, we looked pretty good in, the, in our scrimmage last Saturday. Um, how does the uh, defensive line stack up? Well, the defensive line is yeah, that's going to be important. I mean, when, when I say important, very important early in the season because we're going against some teams that are going to be considerably bigger than we are. So our ability to be able to get off blocks and use some quickness and some skill uh, to get to the point of attack, get to the ball carrier, is going to be uh, you know going to have a lot uh, a lot to say or a lot that we let's say much of our success on defense will depend on that. Uh, can you talk a bit about the secondary? Well, I, I did earlier, yep. but I think that uh, what we want to do is we want to be able to do a couple of things. Uh, we, we, we've often been a uh, man coverage team. Uh, we do need to be able to incorporate some zone. I think that uh, we were able to do that in, uh, in a number of the playoff games and uh, found that to be very beneficial. Okay, and finally, what are your thoughts uh, on Fairmont? Uh, as of uh, last year, early turnover was proved costly in a narrow loss. Well, there's no question. The turnovers did hurt us. Uh, but then again, Fairmont took advantage of those turnovers. In this game, uh, you're looking at the Alter Fairmont game. Anything can happen. Both teams are going to be sky high for this. It's a tremendous, uh, tremendous ball game for the community, the whole community. Great, uh, great interest, uh, to really, throughout the Miami Valley. And uh, it's a... Uh, it's a treat to play and coach in front of seven, eight, nine thousand people. Um, even kids who are on, uh, playing on the college level at times don't get to play in front of a crowd like that. So there's there's a lot at stake. We our kids need to. Uh, it's been a few years since we've been on the winning uh, winning end of that uh, that game. So yes, we are hungry. Uh, we'll see. No, we cannot lay the ball on the ground and uh, watch them pick it up and run in the end zone and expect to beat these people. All right, Coach. Well, thank you for your insight uh, to the game on Thursday, the 22nd of August, and good luck on Thursday. Thank you.